Hi, Hi here. Chelsea. Okay. I'm gonna also invite Corey Lee, Houston Vandergriff, and Jennifer Allen. Well, welcome up to the stage, you guys. We're so glad that you're here with us, and I know uh, there they are. Excellent. We've got Houston coming on up now. So uh, thank you guys again. I know this is a long day, but there's just so much information, and it's so good to be able to talk with the influencers and the blog our bloggers and social media stars here about all the work that they do to promote accessibility. And I really think that they've helped us um, come such a long way with how active they are on social media. So we're going to go down and just talk, tell us a little bit about yourself, about what you write about, where your major platform is. So we'll start with Corey Lee. Yeah, I'm uh, Corey Lee, and I run Curb Free with Corey Lee, which is a travel blog that I started back in 2013. So. This is my 10th year anniversary, uh, almost, so getting there. And my, yeah, yeah, super exciting. And uh, my primary platforms are Facebook, by far. Um, I tend to have definitely higher engagement on Facebook, which always surprises people a little bit. But uh, Facebook is definitely my number one, also Instagram. Um, in the past couple years, since the pandemic, I've been trying to be very, very active on Instagram and posting every single day, uh, learning a lot from Chelsea here, so um, and following her, but uh, yeah, it's been a fun journey. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Thank you, um, so I'll also say I've learned a lot from Corey. <laughs> um, my name is Chelsea Bear, my Instagram handle is at real Chelsea Bear, my real last name is Chelsea Bear, is Bear, and a lot of people think it's fake, so that's why I had to put real in front of it. Um, so I'm on essentially every platform. Instagram is my biggest with about uh, 350,000 followers, uh, followed by TikTok. I just started YouTube this year. That's really taken off. Uh, also on Facebook, LinkedIn, and overall, uh, I really started posting consistently in 2020 when the pandemic began. Um, I live with cerebral palsy, and I really just started sharing my experiences of living with cerebral palsy in order to help people understand that conversations around disability don't, don't need to be uncomfortable, because that's something I always felt growing up. People, it was kind of the elephant in the room to everyone I met. Uh, so that's why I started, and since I did start during the pandemic, obviously travel wasn't a big focus, but now that I'm able to start traveling again, I've really dove into this space, and over the past two years, really started to rev up my travel content, talking about accessibility and traveling with my scooter um, that I call Scoots, and I have a little mini-series called Scoots on the Move, sharing just travels I do, so that's a little bit about that's me. cute, I love it. Yeah, thank I you. I seen that one. And my friend Jennifer here. Hi, I'm Jennifer Allen with Wonders Within Reach. Um, I entered this space a little bit differently than everyone else in that it's my seven-year-old who has a disability. So when we had his diagnosis day back in 2017 and I found out that he would never walk independently, um, there's a big shell shock as a mom without any of this background. And the doctors load you up with information of all of the things that you're losing, um, all of the, the low quality of life that you can expect as he's growing up and the things he's going to miss out on. And I wish in that moment that someone had given me a printout of people like this, That's where right, yeah. I had some perspective <laughs> in, I mean, what they give you is not, I, maybe it's not all false, but you're missing so much of the information. They cut out life. Yeah, all of it. I mean, I don't understand the description, low quality of life. When I look at the lives that we are leading now, I mean, I don't. It's not. There's nothing low about it. Right. Life so, is worth living for all of us. It was really good um, understanding of why this is so important across the board. I got to touch base a little bit with Corey Lee this morning and say how he really changed the trajectory of our lives when I discovered him. So. Leaving the doctor that day, I envisioned us being trapped in our playroom for the rest of our lives. Everyone here knows that that's ridiculous because we have this understanding now. But in that moment, I mean, that's kind of a mirror of the ableism that we live in and the shelteredness as able-bodied people that we don't know better because we don't see it. There's not representation in the media. We have no idea that there are wheelchair users who are doing big things. Um, so left there with that perspective and 
then I was trying to think about, okay, well, what am I grieving the loss of most, and how can I start to build some sort of life, not thinking that it would ever be an equal life, but thinking how can I, you know, fill in replacement things so that we're at least living. Uh, I started with Googling trails you can do with wheels. I literally did not even Google wheelchair accessible trails because I didn't know it was a thing. I didn't know that wheelchair hiking existed. This was nowhere in my mind. Um, looked up stroller friendly trails, which you can find a lot more of, but it's not always the same thing as a wheelchair accessible trail, but was able to find some more things that way. As we started this journey, I thought I should share these things because there are a lot of moms like me. I mean, we see kids in wheelchairs when we're at physical therapy, when we're at the hospital, um, in all of these medical and OT spaces, but never out at the playground or when we're on vacation. Like we don't, we don't run into other kids with disabilities. Um, so decided to share our journey and started really researching wheelchair travel, which is when we discovered people like this who were like. Oh, I remember my husband when he found Corey Lee, and he's like, uh, look at this guy who's been to seven continents with a wheelchair. Like, <laughs> there's nothing that we can't do. So since then, I'm, our platforms have kind of divided into two, where the biggest ones are uh, my blog and Instagram. The blog really serves for families. It's inspiring and enabling disability travel. I get comments probably once a month from parents who have just discovered this and didn't know. Some of them have adult children now and they have never gone on a vacation because they didn't know that it was possible. They've never seen this content before to know that, that they can do really anything. Um, and sometimes it's a different kind of adventure, but there are no limitations with wheelchair travel and that is not getting out in the media as much as it should be. Um, so the blog really focuses on that and my most reaches with other parents that are in similar situations to mine. Instagram has a lot of that, but also just other families who are interested in travel uh, who either already are traveling and are looking at destinations and are interested in accessibility and inclusion, or who are overwhelmed and don't know how to get started and they're looking for those tips. And I think that there is a lot of that perspective of, oh, well, if Jen can do it with her three, they can do it. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's a huge part of it. Once they see somebody else doing it and they may perceive our situation to be harder for whatever reason, then it makes people go, well, yeah, I can try that. They did it. So I agree with that, absolutely. I've loved your blog for years, you know that. Uh, and now, Houston. So we've met Houston a couple times already. You're Tell right, us a little yes. bit about yourself, yeah. and we know you're on Instagram and TikTok. No, no, no. So. Is he on? Is he on? Yeah. There oh, yeah, he's on. Good, good. I mean, he's never got me down there, has been, so. Yeah, no, 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 no. And I'm Katie Vandergrift, I'm Houston's mom. And we got into uh, being an influencer. We, we kind of say our journey's like the unlikely influencer. We uh, didn't know what we were doing and we still don't. We're still start, um, not struggling, we're still just stumbling around. But when Houston was little and Facebook became a thing, um, he's got two sisters that are one and two years older than he is. And they said, can we make a Facebook page for Houston? Cause he's really cool and we want to show people that he's really cool. <laughs> And so, of course, you know, how's a mom? Can you say no? So they started a Facebook page for Houston, and um, that we transferred into an Instagram. And then on TikTok, um, I'm an old lady, <laughs> <laughs> social media standards, but I made a TikTok with um, Houston. I set up the account, and we posted a video of him walking down the beach, and we got 12 likes and 12 views. Well, the next week, Houston and his sister were together and they were playing around and they made a TikTok video that was 15 seconds long and by the end of the day it had a million views and by the end of the week it had 10 million views. Newsweek did an article about it and it was basically just about the doctor's expectations, just exactly what you were saying and uh, obviously that struck a nerve and so um, me as his mom, his you know, sister goes back off to college and leaves us with a TikTok account with 100,000 <laughs> followers. And uh, yeah, 100,000 new followers and two TikTok videos. <laughs> so we started uh, branching off into TikTok and we've just found that Houston's story resonates with so many people and it's exactly what you guys have said. You know, if it's not out there, if your story's not out there to inspire people, then you don't know. And so we have found that um, with Down syndrome, there's so much information that's outdated. The stereotypes and the barriers are from a long time ago when expectations were so low. But now with everything that is happening, it's, it's a much better story. 
And so we've just been um, pushed and encouraged to share that story. And so now we are downs and towns yeah, on are. Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, which is now X, and Facebook and LinkedIn. Thank you guys all. It's, it's just so fascinating to hear each of the different stories and to hear that component of we want our stories out so that those who follow us have an easier time. I, I just love that aspect of it. It's, you know, a lot of this is sharing our personal stuff, but it's, it's also blazing a trail in a way that people have never done before, and it's just so important. So tell us, um, we've had this conversation with a couple of you, so you're gonna have to think of something new. Sorry, Corey, sorry, Jason. Uh, tell us, if you've already told us one, tell us another best travel experience, and if this is your first time sharing one, let's hear about one of your favorite travel experiences ever. Okay, so um, another destination that I worked with last year was Madison, Wisconsin. Um, and they did something really unique in that, like, not only was the trip amazing, I got to go adaptive rock climbing for the first, well, the second time ever, uh, but it was really awesome and something that I didn't know if I could actually do, but they made it happen, um, which is something I love. I love any kind of adaptive adventure or something that somebody may think, you know, well, that's not accessible, and then I'll show that it actually is. Like, that brings me so much joy just showing my audience that, you know, the impossible is sometimes possible. Um, and then at the end of that press trip with Visit Madison, they also invited me into their DMO to speak about what I'd learned about Madison that week, what I liked, what I didn't like, which was really important, uh, because they ended up making the changes on their website and creating more, a more accessible landing page, um, talking with city planners about better curb cuts and crosswalks and some restaurants that I went to about getting better accessible bathrooms and restrooms. So um, just being invited into the DMO on the very last day of the trip, that's I think the only time that's ever happened to me. Um, and I really enjoyed that just because they were able to hear, you know, firsthand my experiences instead of just reading about it, they were able to ask questions and me answer, which was really great um, and helpful. I really love that they had you come in. That's yeah, so yeah. important. It should be a part of every time yeah. that we do one of those trips. Absolutely. Have a debrief. Let's talk about what worked and what didn't.